trading newsletters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 24th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're gonna go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much, much more important than that. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Send it early, steve at tfn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question in our Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic, fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got uh, most of the indices in the green, mildly so. The Dow's up 11 points, S&P 10, NASDAQ 156. Uh, the semis are up 18 points there. The leaders in the clubhouse up one and one-tenth percent. New York Stock Exchange is flat. It says down seven points. It is down seven points. That's flat. You've got the spot volatility index now starting to take a deep dive. Uh, it's trading out at 38 bucks. That's well below its 50-day exponential moving average out there. When that is moving lower, the S&P should be moving sideways to higher out there. Hmm, something to think about. If we go take a look at Goldilocks, she's back 11 bucks, trading out at 17.33. Uh, silver is down 14 cents, a little bit less than 1%. Uh, Light Sweet Crude is trading out at 16.80. Natural gas back three pennies. The 30-year Treasury up nine ticks. Lead the charge dollar-wise. It is Shopify up 24 bucks, nearly 4%. Wayfair, 16 bucks, $16. O'Reilly Automotive, 11 bucks. Tesla is up about 10. To the downside, Mercado Libre up 26 bucks, 4%. eHealth is down 17 bucks or 13%. Google's off 12. Uh, Booking Holdings down 14. And um, well, that's really about it. Uh, no requests. There was a request uh, that came in, I think, really early this morning. Let's uh, from Mike in Niagara Falls. And Mike was wanting to just simply take a look at IYR or some of the holdings inside there. Here, if we take a look at the IYR. Now, Mike is, uh, I believe, Mike, you have the belief that the uh, real estate sector is going to go back to the 2009 lows out there. Um, I say we just think simply take things one step at a time. I can understand that. Certainly, you know, real estate is going to look a little bit different as the economy starts to come back online. Certainly, you don't want to be owning much in the way of brick and mortar uh, businesses out there. Uh, if we do take a look at the IYR, though, and see what it's doing as we speak right now, you've got uh, price trading in between support and resistance on its daily time frame. It's got a bear structure profile. If price got up to $80.12, that's where the snipers or the sellers are hanging out. Uh, right now, it looks like price is going to go try to make its way down to where the buyers are hanging out, $68.14. That's the bottom of that daily profile. Otherwise, uh, price is trading below the weekly, trading below the uh, monthly profiles. And so, yeah, it doesn't really look that great out here. Let's take a look at the IYR. I don't know how long this ETF 
has been around. Let me see if we've got the monthly. So when to take a look at the monthly time frame out here, what it did was it pulled back and it found support at its uh, third breakout level. That was 56.06. So Mike, if uh, you know that 56.06 area is support, below that's going to bring you 51.57 and then below that 29.14. Those are breakout levels on the way down for the IYR. That's taking a look at the monthly time frame. Uh, what do we have out here on the daily time frame? Do I have really anything? I've got Stevie's red line at $70.18. Today's going to be day number five of a, a TD setup uh, nine count pattern, potential nine count pattern out here. But if uh, price breaks below 70.18, Mike, then you're going to see 68.14, the bottom of that daily profile below that. Then you're down towards the lows of March of this year. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the U.S. real estate sector within the uh, or the iShares uh, real estate uh, sector ETF out there. Let's go take a look at the uh, general markets out here. And hey, let me give you a, a voice of caution, a voice of caution, a word of caution out here. Uh, over the last half hour, I have had significant internet issues out here. I've rebooted my system twice to get everything back up and running. It really was by the hair of our chinny chin chin that we got this thing going just before I came on the air. The reason I say that is if I get knocked off again, pretty good chance I'm not going to be able to get back on. And if that's the case, my apologies, but wanted to give you that kind of heads up. And I don't know why that's happening for us. I guess the early start of a Friday, although that's not really what I wanted to do. So let's go take a look at the, uh, what things can we look at? Let's go take a look at uh, what what the markets are doing from a short-term standpoint. And that's this. Remember, always important to understand support and resistance because we've had such wild swings or large swings. We won't call them wild, just simply large. Uh, the intraday charts really are the ones that are helpful to both you and I at understanding what the intention of the market is. And, and understanding those breakout and breakdown levels, and it's really important because they're not swing points out here and you want to learn this tool. It's easy to learn. You just simply go subscribe to Mastering Probability at a minimum of 29 days because it's a 30-day free trial. And and you're going to learn loads that you're going to be able to apply to your trading and investing, and it'll guarantee you it will help you. If we take a look at what transpired last night at about, uh, what time was it now? Um, let me not guess what the time was and tell you too many things running through my head. It was uh, about 10 o'clock last night. Uh, each of the equity futures contracts for their hourly time frame. Now, I'm only showing the ES, the NQ, and the Dow out here. You'll see that they bottom with that TD setup nine count. And then what took place this morning? Well, price ran its way up. And when did it uh, when did it uh, stop moving higher? Well, that was at nine o'clock. And why? Because that was a TD nine count. Now, in both of those, all three of these instances, those TD nine counts happened before resistance, their breakdown resistance, 2817, 8734, and 23630 out there. Those are going to be key levels to be observing today. Now, that TD nine count, remember, when sellers get a topping signal, which is what transpired here, their role is to try to bust through support. Support, at least get down to support. That's exactly what happened on a 60 minute time frame. You can also see that as that nine count was forming here in the ES, look at the upper panel chart out here. You can see Stevie's red line at that stage was turning green. What happens then? What's that phenomena associated with Stevie's green and red line? When those change colors, you're going to see price go test those areas. And when that test takes place, it tells you what its intention is. Well, in the case of the ES Mini, the test was to go down, test, and reject that level. Stevie's green line currently 27.91. If you can't bust them down, it looks like the ES Mini is going to try to bust it to the upside. The upside is 28.17.50. You had the same thing going on inside of the NQ. Again, 87.34 is going to be a key area to watch. And inside the Dow, it's struggling. It's still not above Stevie's green line for its 60-minute time frame out there. We're just trading between support and resistance. Support are those red horizontal lines, 2755, 8505, and 23166. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, 
weapons, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's spend uh, no questions at this stage here. So the uh, lines are open, 877-927-6648. Uh, no emails uh, as of uh, yet. And so it gives us an opportunity to spend a little time to take a look at the bigger picture out there. And that is just substantially important. And I'm not worried right now about just trying to time the market, so to speak. But I want you to have a really good perspective on the uh, big picture and just simply statistics or data and the importance of it and it's a relative uh, uh, its ability to help you and I understand what is going to take place. And that's just so important out here because you can get so caught up into the minutia of the news and everybody's opinion. I'm not going to give you my opinion. I'm just simply going to narrate what the charts are communicating to you and I. And then from there, you make your decisions. Uh, basically, when I analyze or analyze a stark stock chart out here, I'm just just reading, not reading any tea leaves, I'm just reading what buyers and sellers are communicating to us. That's all that we're doing out here. So we're understanding what they are telling us. Now we use a, uh, a handful of tools that assist us with that. You get to see those used time and time again, multiple time frames, instruments and so forth, and that just makes it easier. And you then get to determine whether those tools are helpful to you. So how the, the, the question, the question is, how important is unemployment or how important is it for you and I to understand unemployment and the stock market? Well, let's go take a look at it here. What I've done, we could go back into the 1920s out here, but here I'm just going back to 1969. So we've got what, 40 years, 
70, 80, 90, did 50 years worth of uh, data out here. That's pretty decent, right? Now, the top portion of the chart, and we're just looking at closing prices. This is the lo just uh, line charts out here. You've got the, and this monthly time frames out here because we get monthly unemployment uh, uh, numbers out here. If we take a look at, so the top portion is the Dow. So this uh, portion here of the charts that you're looking at take us from 1969 to 1990. So we've got uh, 70, 80, 90, we've got 20 years worth of data out here. The bottom portion is the unemployment percentage. And what is it that you see? You see when unemployment is going up, so that's the bottom panel, and you see the arrow going up, and you can see the unemployment percentage, and you go back and you take a look at what the Dow is doing, it's moving lower. When unemployment is falling, what is the Dow doing? It's moving higher. When unemployment is rising, what is the Dow doing? You're just following my cursor here. You see the direct correlation out here between unemployment even take a look at the 1987 crash. So many people, I've heard many people trying to somehow correlate the coronavirus crash to the 1987 crash. You have to be an idiot to make that correlation out here. What was unemployment doing after the 1987 crash? It's called just a blip. How could one possibly correlate the 1987 crash to what's going on right now. You have to ignore unemployment. You have to ignore GDP. You have to ignore everything that is realistic out here. Everything. Take a look. So this here, here's this just takes us to 1990. Let's go take a look at what's transpired from 1991 into 2020. It is the exact same pattern and principle. Now, look, I just threw in here for blanks and giggles that the unemployment rate's going to come out around 21%. I don't know what it's going to come out at. We'll, we'll have that data soon enough. But do you really think that we just bottomed in unemployment? I mean, I suppose that's what somebody, some people could think. How could that possibly be? I don't think that is even close to reality out here. They're fighting our politicians, your politicians. They're not my politicians. I wouldn't vote for any of them, any of them, really. Do we really want to give careers for politicians out here? We see what they're, anyways, let's just stick to the charts out here. So this is very important for you to understand the core. And, you know, when you got the. Uh, 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 Buffett's uh, partner Munger saying, and what these guys are sitting on 180 billion in cash or something like that, and they're just simply some of their small businesses, which aren't so small, are just simply going to be shuttered, meaning that they don't even believe investing some of their funds into those businesses make a whole lot of sense. So we're in this decade, probably, of major unemployment. What else will you know? Now, there, there's something else I put in here because somebody had asked me yesterday, uh, what about uh, investing in municipal bonds? Okay, so here's what I want to be able to, you know, so you've got to take a look at your portfolios because many of you may not really know, uh, depending on the ETFs that you have, uh, where you're at with regard to your exposure to different uh, municipal bond funds out there. So here, states made risky. This is uh, taken from some news article that I had yesterday or, or this morning. States made risky bets with pensions before the coronavirus. Now they want a bailout. You guys all know that, right? So let's go take a look at the iShares Muni Bond ETF, the MUB, which had that nice big move to the downside. Right now it's trading below Stevie's red line, heading back to support 109.15 or 107.85. But that stuff doesn't really even matter. What matters is what are the top 10 holdings inside of this ETF? Well, now... All we've got to do is you can go do this yourself. You can pull this up. Here are the top 10 holdings. Now, they happen to have their top holding is cash. Cash is king. There's no doubt about that. But when you start taking a look, and these percentages are small because they have lots of holdings, so lots of exposure out there. But the top holding is the uh, Metropolitan Transit Authority in New York. You think New York's bond funds, your pension funds are in good shape out there? I could have swore I heard Como uh griping, I was going to use an adjective to add to that griping out there about the money that is needed inside of New York and certainly coronavirus oriented would get it, but their pension funds? No. And where do they make a lot of their money, folks? Off of taxes. 
sales taxes, room taxes. I mean, all that stuff is shut down. So number one, you've got the Metropolitan Transit Authority. Then you've got the New York City Transit Financial Authority. Then you got San Francisco. Then you've got Universal uh, University of California, something or other. Uh, more California. So and then you got Washington State out there. So in the top 10 holdings, you're dealing with New York, California, and the uh, state of Washington out there. We haven't even gotten into things like New Jersey or Illinois, for goodness sakes. And so my recommendation to the individual who emailed me yesterday was don't worry about trying to time this. Get your cash out of, now you can be selective. Some, some cities, some states are certainly better than others out there. But when it comes to the ETF as an example, why would you have any exposure inside this marketplace? Now, maybe you've got a reason to have exposure there. I'm saying don't do it. Don't do it. I think Rodney Dangerfield would say that, wouldn't he? Don't do it. When you know, when you can see what's coming, there's all kinds of defaults that are going to transpire. So limit your exposure to any of these areas out there. Mike in uh, Niagara Falls, he gave you an area to be watching out for and get out of the way of. That's the real estate sector out there. Here's another one with regard to uh, munis. If you've got to have exposure to bonds, make sure that it's just the U.S. Uh, Federal Treasury bond out there. I don't care if it's the TLT. And yeah, the TLT and Treasury bonds are not done moving higher. Don't forget, we looked at Treasury bonds in other currencies that are making higher highs eventually. But, but I don't mean to be Stevie Downer or Debbie Downer, but I do want to protect your assets out there. Stay clear of municipal bonds. Stay clear of the real estate sector out there and anticipate a economic winter. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastery Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we know the uh, direct correlation, directional correlation between the unemployment rate and the uh, Dow and what it does. We have talked about over the past couple of weeks uh, GDP and its correlation to uh, major bottoms in the stock market. So what you and I clearly know is the bottom that formed back in March was the coronavirus bottom. The next bottom that forms, which will be sometime over the course of the next decade, 10, 12 years or so, well, that will be the GDP and probably the unemployment bottom. But until then, folks, and not really talking about trying to time this market, I'm talking about you trying to protect your assets and take a look at that long-term portfolio out there and remember what kind of what that burn felt like on the uh, way down and uh, start preparing, start preparing for economic winter out here. It's just, again, it's not my opinion. It is, it's just simply the data. And oftentimes we don't go back and, you know, I say, look, don't be a prisoner of your past. Be a pioneer of your future. And I mean that for you personally and individually. But you know many people, and we can see them, that are a pioneer of their past. They are not, or they're a prisoner of their past and not a pioneer of their future out here. But one thing about the stock market tools that you and I look at is these patterns repeat over and over again, right? We've gone back into the 19, early 1900s and we've taken a look at each of these patterns, whether it's Rhodes Momentum Indicator, the TD9 count patterns out there. It's why when we take a look at the uh, Dow, let's do this here. Let's pull this over just so we can take a look at it. And we had a request to go take a look at IAG. But let me just stay on the soapbox for a moment because this is really, truly, extraordinarily important to you. And look, I hope I'm as wrong as I possibly can be. I absolutely do. But I... You decide. <laughs> I think that I think the data is is pretty is 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 pretty compelling. Now, what we do know is on this last move, the coronavirus low made its way all the way back to its breakout support level inside the Dow. That was 19,677. Yes, it got down below it, but at the end of the month, price closed back above it. That was its first test out here. It's pierced through that area. So that says to me that the next low that comes in are going to be those next breakout levels. Those next breakout levels, that could be 17,063. The better one, the better breakout level for us, now it'll cause a lot of pain where 23,537 would be the 15,855 level. The reason why I say that would be the better one is because that has been a proven level of support. This began back in October of 2014, and it was tested during the 2015 consolidation pattern. And it was tested back in August of 2015. August of 2015, that might have been the, was August of 2015, was that the, um, was that the, uh, uh, shoot, what's that other disease that uh, Ebola? Was that the Ebola low or was that the Malaysian airliner low out there? I can't recall. Might have been the Ebola low back in 2015. Doesn't matter. Price came back to that test out level, tested and rejected it. We were still in a consolidation. The market was, not you or I, but the market was still in a consolidation. Retested that level in January of 2016 and February of 2016. And each of those three times it held. So if price could get back and hold that 15,855 level, that's the possibility. Possibility. Possibility of being a uh, bottom out there. But um, the, these lows are going to get, they're not just going to test it. They're going to get uh, blown through there, and uh, and those will be the levels to be watching. The 15,855, 17,063, and may not stop there. We'll have to take a look at what's going on inside of the daily time frame charts. Now, uh, let's go. Oh, IAG was the request out here. So let's go take a look at IAG, and that is for... Um, that's from George in Tampa. So George is looking for an entry 
standpoint into IAG and from a long-term hold standpoint. So let's go take a look at IAG. Let's let's do this here. Let's start with our market profiles. That is I Am Gold Corporation. Now we take a look at IAG. This is uh, traded above its daily and its weekly profiles. So your next level of resistance, George, is going to be the top of the monthly profile. That's 397. So what George and I are doing right now is we're looking at these charts and because uh, because we're sports enthusiasts uh, that we want to understand what the teams are doing. And this is and so when we understand what the teams are doing, where's offense, where's defense out here? Is there any defense? Well, when price is blown through the top of a profile, it's you're headed to the end zone, wherever that next level might be. Well, I'm saying that the end zone for I am gold is going to be 397. That's the only profile that price is below. Now, you're saying here, George, you want to take this trade from a long term perspective. And what I want to say to you or share with you is that going back from July of 2019, geez, pretty soon we're going to be at July of 2020. So for over basically about a year, this thing has been consolidating and it has found resistance at that 397 level and you're at 354. So now is most certainly not the time to take that long position out here. You would need to see IAG. I'd rather you buy it if price closed above 397. But right now we know that that is, is a significant resistance level. It's been in place for over a year out here. And so you'd be watching that. Now let's pull over my other charts out there. Um, and, and on the daily, it would be the top of its profile. That's 283. 326 would be the pullback area on its uh, weekly time frame. I'm not suggesting that that's where you would go enter and take the uh, position. Let's take the uh, daily time frame out here as well. Let me see what this might be trading into. Is this trading in any other resistance out here? And voila, it is. The green line isn't uh, stretched all the way across, but you'll see a 364 out here. And price looks like it got up to about 364 today. Uh, that is a uh, resistance. So price needs to clear that to be able to make that move to the top of that uh, daily profile. The last time price was up here, we didn't necessarily know why prices stopped. Now, when I say last up here, I'm referring back to this trading session, which was a wide ranging bar on February 25th. But all it did was it tested and it rejected that breakdown level. And then it proceeded to move and make the uh, March low out here back on March the 17th. Do I have any other kind of topping signal? I don't have any other topping signal on a daily time frame out here other than that 364 is a significant resistance level. So what this would be then saying to you, George, is that IAG may begin to pull back. In fact, you and I would bet money that IAG and Stevie's green line are going to catch each other test each other. We just don't know how. We don't know if price is pulling back, if price is moving sideways while the oscillator and change line moves higher. We don't know, but there is an ensuing test. And it'll be that test, George, that will tell you whether or not price on the daily basis will pull back to its breakout level. Granted, I gave you the top of that daily profile about 283, but the real breakout level on the uh, IAG for its daily time frame is 246. That would be the level that you would be looking for based upon that daily time frame. Let's go see on a weekly basis out here for I am gold if there's any resistance. Oh yeah, well, sure enough, 355 is the uh, number. Uh, and that is its uh, TD9 count uh, breakdown uh, level, um, but it is still an area of resistance. So with regard to you want this from a long-term standpoint, look, we're just simply in looking at that monthly time frame, we know that that's not the type of gain that you're looking for. The difference between 397 to 354, and therefore I think you've got to sit on your hands for a while, Greg. I hope that that helps you out. Again, ticker symbol I A G. Uh, we can go take a look at for SNP and the den wants to look at the I W M. So let's go take a look at the I W M. Let's do it here using the same tool. Oh, I hear the music. So we'll be back to look at I W M in just a few. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. 
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, Russell 2000. We're looking at its ETF uh, request inside the Tiger's Den. And if we just begin by taking a look at its daily time frame, what we can very clearly see is that price made its made its way up to resistance. Resistance here, several several gaps to the downside inside of the IWM. So we're looking at the gap to the downside on March 12th. That had volume of 70 million shares. Now, as price got up there, when I say up there, I mean to the bottom of the gap. That's the low of the trading session of March 11th. Uh, price uh, volume was pretty nice. It was 69 million versus the 70 million to the downside. Nonetheless, it was a test and rejection because price was pushing into a uh, area of resistance with decent volume, it was really suggesting that price would get back up there and retest that area. And that's exactly what happened on April 14th. And April 14th's test was a test and rejection with much lighter volume, half the volume, 35 million shares to be exact. Now, so you know that that's your resistance level, 124.17. If price can clear that, well, then, okay, it's going to go ahead or should be able to move higher. What else do we know? There's resistance at 124.88. That's the top of its daily profile out here. What we can see is the Russell 2000 has just simply been moving sideways. Now, what the Russell 2000 has done, it's very bearish out here. It's completed like a 0.382 Gartley cell pattern. Here's every Gartley cell pattern is going to have an A to B equals CD to the upside. And in fact, that's what we got out here. That's what took place as price 
price was testing that breakdown level. And then there was this gap to the downside right here on April 15. That confirmed the Gartley sell pattern. Now, the key is that price is just simply consolidating. It's trading between support and resistance, being the bottom of the profile and the top of the profile out here. If price closes below the bottom of that profile, 111.51 does it for more than two trading sessions. Well, it won't be a, a stretch here for the Russell 2000 to make its way all the way back to those March lows. And if price can take out resistance, well, then this Gartley sell pattern will have failed. Now, let's take a look at what's going on on the weekly time frame for the IWM. Price, if this is just a counter trend rally in the IWM, and we believe that it is, and we believe that our small businesses are really going to get the schnot kicked out of them, really get the schnot kicked out of them, uh, and uh, with this uh, virus, this 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 flu virus, like all flu viruses that go away in the summertime. And boy, isn't it great to be living in Florida where the heat and humidity seem to dampen the uh, virus out there? That's a beautiful thing. But if this is just a counter trend rally in the Russell 2000, we would have picked the top of its profile as a level to where the counter trend rally would have ended. Well, that's exactly what took place. 125.07 is the number. Price got up to 124.88, so that's uh, close enough for us out here. And, you know, the IWM has got that uh, topping signal out here. Now, if we go take a look at Stevie's other tools out here, see if there's anything that we can see, anything else that is of significance. I don't have anything of significance on the daily. I don't have anything on the weekly of the price is still trading well below Stevie's red line. That's at 128 and uh, change out here. And uh, yeah, so I don't I don't really have anything else. I hope that helps you out with regard to the IWM. There was another request inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at ticker symbol IMMU. So first, let's go figure out what that is. IMMU. That is uh Immunomedics Inc. out here. And uh, boy, this thing has had uh, quite a, a few uh, gaps, to say the uh, least. Uh, right now, it's trading at 27.59, and it's an inside bar today. Inside bars typically mean that the trend that's in place is going to continue. In that case, there, that would say continue to the upside. Now, we say continue to the upside, but what we can clearly see when we go look at the long-term chart, that's the monthly time frame, that's the right panel, is that what price has done, it's made its way up to resistance. That's 27.33. Granted, price is trading above it, but the end of the month is not here. So a close above that, beautiful thing. A close where we're at right now, we're really below 27.33, says, hey, go see if on the daily time frame or the weekly time frame, there's some other type of uh, topping patterns or signals out here. So let's go take a look at the uh, daily time frame. And on the daily time frame, what do we have? I don't have anything to suggest that it is a top, at least with the data that we're looking at at this stage here. So let's go switch over to the uh, weekly time frame. And don't don't worry yourself that price gapped up and it is traded lower and think that that is a bearish candle. It's not. It just tells you where price opened and where price is trading uh, right now. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, well, the weekly time frame, what do we have out here? Really not much. Price closing the week out above 21.93 is uh, intermediate time uh, bullish out here. On uh, the monthly time frame, is there anything else other than what we uh, had, which was the uh, top of the profile? No, nothing else that I have. But watch the uh, profile level 27.33 for a ticker symbol Immunomedics Inc. Yeah, no, not really a great pronunciation uh, of that. But uh, it does look to me like it wants to continue to move higher. Hope that helps you out. I don't recall who requested that, but uh, it was somebody that was inside the Tiger's Den. We've got a couple questions coming in by email here. Uh, first one from Hector and uh, Patty. Uh, and uh, Hector says, I believe what you are saying and we are following your lead. Okay. Uh, if given time, can you discuss your Dow seasonal map? I believe May 19th on average is a big uh, topping date out there. And so what Hector in the fuel injectors is asking for, and I can find it, 
Um, I tell you what I'm going to do, Hector, is I'll come back and find that during the break because it could take, and we've got about two minutes before the break. So I'll come back to that. We'll take a look at the seasonality chart here uh, for you. But you are right. It is in the middle of November where you typically see a sell in May and uh, go away type of pattern. Rich writes in and Rich says, uh, thank you for your informative show, even if you're depressing at times. I've got to love that. That's okay. No problem. I'm just giving you the facts. I t I said I've shared with you. I just said I said it live. I hope I am as dead wrong as humanly possible. But you know what that would require? That would require me to say this time's going to be different, and that I'm going to ignore all the facts out there. You can ignore all the facts that I present. It's okay with me. Um, could you please discuss gold and the gold miners? I'm torn because it seems like we should have deflation in the short term due to a lack of a demand caused by high unemployment. In the long run, printing and borrowing trillions of dollars should be inflationary. You're currently long. So, um, Rich, I would say you're, you're, you're dead wrong about the idea of printing money and that that causes inflation. And I hate to be so direct about that. But, Rich, think about it like this. We have been, I mean, we, all we have to just, I'm just asking you to look at the facts and let some of these myths go by the wayside. The Fed has, in terms, has been printing money since the beginning of time, but certainly since 2008. What kind of inflation have we seen out there? None. This printing of money, look, because we are the dominant and the primary currency out here, um, it, it, printing money. Well, here, you talk about money supply. You think printing money causes a lot of putting additional money into the market? Let's say you own a $5 million house and I buy it for 10% down. And you get paid on your $5 million. And I only put 10% of my money down. That's $4.5 million. Where did that come from? Mortgages produce more cash in the marketplace than anything the Fed could do. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? 
taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We We take take it it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, so Rich, uh, I just want you to understand that the printing of money, especially when you are the world's dominant currency, which we are in the U.S., uh, is not going to create inflation. The only thing that's really going to create, well, there's several different types of inflation. But the type of inflation that you're talking about as far as printing money, that is just an absolute myth. And we have all the historical data right now just simply coming from 2008 to where we're at. And then you have to realize, uh, because we're in a fractional banking system, that what prints more money, Money, puts more money in the marketplace out there are is is all the home purchases and mortgages you know where does that, that money just comes out of uh, thin air right so it, it, it is an absolute fallacy to believe that printing money now if we're in some other country some third world country or what have you we've got a, they, they've got a different situation but we're the world's dominant currency I read a report recently that 70 percent of the actual hard currency meaning the dollars hundred dollar bills primarily is outside of the US that tells you about the demand for our currency Currency, I promise you could go anywhere around the world. I've done it. I have traveled the world. I have absolutely traveled the world. Kind of like David White, I've got millions of miles, millions of miles on several different airlines out there. I've had the opportunity to see what the U.S. dollar actually means to people across the globe. If you travel with U.S. dollars, you will be able to use U.S. dollars anywhere you go, anywhere you go. Back to the uh, GDX out here. I realize we're running out of time. Uh, what it's done so far out here, Rich, it's made a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD to the upside. We're we were looking at this yesterday, and yesterday at around 1 o'clock, it looked like it might be a shooting star. Too much bottom of a wick out here, so it was just a gap to the upside. If the GDX generates some type of bearish reversal candle, then it's telling you that it has topped out at least from a daily time frame. Until then, until a bearish reversal candle forms, this A to B equals CD pattern says price heads up to about $37.03 out there. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Take a look at your portfolio, please. No municipal bond exposure out there. And start preparing for economic winter. This bounce has been a gift. I'm sorry that I'm Stevie Downer, but I do want to help you protect your hard-earned capital. So have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you back here on Magnificent Magical Monday. Take care, folks.